I being chief minister daughter lost an election many people were surprised i said boss this is democracy that is the beauty of it if my father decides to do anything as big as you know joining nda he's a person who'll up front tell people of telangana and then do it one rail one day bharat rail is inaugurated how many times in every state in every segment you inaugurate one day bharat rail it has become a joke a leader does not become leader by putting his face on every scheme narega is being very effectively killed by this government in the process of killing the gandhi family name you are killing the people of this nation the hypocrisy of congress party you talk about obcs in madhya pradesh but you don't talk about obcs in karnataka you are in power in rajasthan today congress party why are you not saving democracy there you are in power in chatisgarh the the atrocities on tribals have you stopped saving the democracy is ultimately saving the people not dislodging bjp inda alliance don't have any proper objective what they are saying is we want to dislodge the bjp from power theek hai but what is your alternative plan for the country if you live in uh, us no matter how many years you live there they can't pronounce your name that ticked me off if you look at the entire southeast asia politics we were the first nation to give a women prime minister and america still doesn't have a women president i'm a very staunch very staunch religious person i follow hinduism very carefully uh, very religiously and as long as people like me are alive nothing will happen to sanatan dar i never spoke about it in public but i will today uh, my brother's son was body shamed by the current pcc uh, in a very bad manner when uh, ed had displayed both my phone numbers on screen without my permission although i'm not accused or anything they just displayed my phone both of my sons told me only one thing you are the devil i know you'll be strong <laughs> Namaste Jai Hind welcome to another edition of ANI podcast with Smita Prakash Prime Minister Modi when he was campaigning in Telangana said that the chief of the BRS party visited him in 2020 and wanted to be part of the NDA but as a quid pro quo KCR who's the chief minister of Telangana and head of the BRS wanted the BJP's support for a local election the PM said that he did not take the BRS into the NDA fold also he did not support the brs because the brs is steeped in corruption the chief minister's daughter k kavita who is a member of the legislative council in the state of telangana is our guest today she is a young politician who has carved a niche for herself in state politics however she is also under cloud for a scam which involves the delhi government complicated set of issues so let's unravel these issues with my guest for today k kavita Kavita ji thank you so much for being thank part you. of the podcast first i'm going to talk to you about the controversy which has come after uh, prime minister went to your state and uh, he spoke out there he said in a rally that your father had called on pm modi in uh, 2020 and expressed the desire to join the nda uh, your brother went late night uh, on uh, tv ktr ji went on tv and he said on a press briefing that he said that are we crazy to be part of nda everybody is <laughs> leaving nda and things like that so now what is the truth can you just tell us what happened in 2020 and how is the reaction now uh 2020 i don't know ma'am what happened between modi ji and ksr ji but one thing i know uh i know my father i don't know modi ji but i know my father if my father decides to do anything as big as you know joining nda or you know asking for various other things that honorable prime minister claims he's a person who'll up front tell people of telangana and then do it because i've seen him all my life he's a person who will never shy away from sharing whatever he wants to do with his own people first and then do it so that is why because i know my father because i know my leader i believe honorable prime minister is in the false but as i said again i don't know modi ji very well uh, what he says uh, on stage and what he said yesterday has not been taken in a very good taste in telangana at least but come election everybody goes crazy uh, we've seen honorable modi ji slightening mamta the number of times yesterday not only in telangana rest of the rallies if you check uh, it was not up to the mark as a, you would not expect such speeches from honorable prime minister but nevertheless election season um, people also will take it in a different spirit but again my father my leader if he wants to say or do anything like that 
or if he wants to take such a big decision he will very boldly say it out and then do it so mm. i would uh, not agree with what honorable prime minister said are you a sounding board for your father like would he have discussed it with you before going public with it in telangana not at all ma'am i'm a very junior member in my party mm. i am not privy to most of these conversations my only uh, liberty which i take very freely being a daughter is i will sound him off of the chatter that is happening outside which many people many politician probably will not do it like if somebody is saying something very weird outside i can tell him that that mm. this is what people are thinking so you decide what to do what not to do but it is not the other way around that you know he's a very seasoned politician very experienced politician almost 50 years into public life i am i just came into the party 10 years back otherwise i was in people from last 20 mm. years i am among people but in a political party i'm a very junior member i'm still learning a lot uh, but the prime minister also said in the rally that uh, your father said that uh, uh, that he wants to take a back seat and karobar apne bete ko which is hand over the business not the political party he said karobar ko apne bete ko saapna chahte hain which is like mm-hmm. hand over to his son would would that uh, would that make you a little uncomfortable that uh, that the succession plans uh, have come out in the open ma'am this is democracy it it cannot be a succession i being chief minister daughter lost an election many people were surprised i said boss this is democracy that is the beauty of it you know that is the way people humble you out so telangana people are very clear in their verdicts they are very very outright very well aware of political scenario so succession etc will people decide you know no no one leader no one party can decide and uh, my brother and many other senior members in the party have worked day and night for the telangana movement uh, he's uh, my brother is also the working president of the party so we really do not need anybody's permission if we need to make some changes within the party other than the people of telangana we do not need anybody else's permission two points which i want to pick up one is about uh, the projects which you say that it was promised and not delivered and the second one uh, is about uh, it's it really doesn't matter what the prime minister said about your family and things it doesn't matter actually to the people of telangana what what really matters to them are these projects now the prime minister he uh, announced Uh, projects for 8000 crores several uh, new projects uh, would you say that that's not enough or it's come too late uh, ma'am uh, honorable prime minister has visited telangana many times before hmm. he could have inaugurated these projects before or these are the projects which generally ministers inaugurate prime ministers don't and uh, the joke of this country ma'am unfortunately one rail one day bharat rail is inaugurated how many times in every state in every segment you inaugurate vande bharat rail it has become a joke and every time a senior minister goes inaugurates a vande bharat rail i'm like it is a concept yes we get it you inaugurated it once it is your initiative very good initiative happy but you can't keep on inaugurating the same project in every segment everywhere and keep on claiming it is like uh, now this government what it does if you put a 1 km highway earlier it was con- c- c- counted as 1 km now they say they change the policy they say 1 km highway is counted as 2 km because they count each side both the lanes i'm like okay since when does this happen because the distance between point a and point b is 1 km it cannot be 2 km because you will go to a and then go back to b ultimately road laid is only for 1 km so the kind of uh, you know uh, disguise or the kind of uh, parda they put on a lot of issues which uh, you know is basically trying to cheat the people of this nation it is not correct you come to telangana after 9 and 1/2 years after criticizing the formation of telangana 100 times on the floor of the parliament you come to people of telangana inaugurating schemes which is not even up to the stature of the honorable prime minister the minister should do it uh, the roads minister can do it and when will these roads be finished Why, why nine and half years के बाद में आके inaugurate कर रहे हैं कब फायदा होगा इसका कब फायदा मिलेगा हमें इसमें ये तो नहीं है ना पहले नौ साल पहले कर देते अच्छा रहता था अभी तो नहीं किया तब इतने लगातार पूछने के बाद नहीं किया नाउ यू आर डूइंग इट वॉट इज़ द पॉइंट एक्सेप्ट फॉर इलेक्शन देर इज़ नथिंग सो दैट पीपल अंडरस्टैंड गुड वॉट एवर केम केम बट टू लेट टू लिटल टू यूजलेस राइट नाउ सो 
the prime minister uh, and the bjp what they say is that um, they take ownership for everything you understand like what they say is that if this is Who a takes project BRS? Uh, no, they take ownership for all the projects, like mm -hmm. you were talking about Bande yes. Bharat. So yes. when these questions are posed to uh, to the ministers, their thing is that we are taking ownership, and by repeating it again and again, <laughs> they it's this that okay, Bande Bharat is BJP's. Nobody can claim that it is a state government. Bande Bharat is nations. It is not BJP's. Kiska paisa? BJP hai, governments. Haan. Yes, railway hmm. railway ka paisa. Kiska paisa? Hai? Janta ka paisa. Hmm. BJP ka paisa nahi hai na. Party ka paisa nahi hai na. Government ka paisa hai. So once you inaugurate a project, we get it. Yes, this government has done Vande Bharat. Vajpayee ji had done golden quadrilateral. How many times did he inaugurate it, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Did he do it at every segment, every kilometer, every milestone? No. That is what these guys are doing now. So that, that is nothing but bluffing the people of this nation. So that's exactly what the BJP says is that there were mistakes that Vajpayee ji made when he didn't take ownership or he didn't um, these are advertising uh, gimmicks, uh, uh, advertising strategies, <laughs> which many people do is that yeah. when you've done something, take ownership and put your stamp on it is what the BJP is doing and which is very different from earlier, um, uh, you know, earlier governments of non-Congress. If you notice, the Congress always took ownership. The Congress always, if it was Manrega, it was uh, uh, Indira Gandhi, Avas Yojana, it was that, there was that tappa of the Congress and the Gandhi family. So, the BJP basically using the same strategy. Ma'am, let me tell you one thing. I am from, not from Congress, I am not from BJP. I am hmm. a South Indian person from a regional party, which now turned a national party. But, in South India, across the nation, people still very fondly remember Vajpayee ji. They say, in ke wajay se rasta bana hai. Hmm. Golden quadrilateral is because of Vajpayee ji. is etched in people's memories. When you do something with heart, people will respond with heart. With all their heart, people will respond. And that is why a leader like that is so tall. A leader does not become leader by putting his face on every scheme. No. If Manarge, Man, uh, Narega was done, what this government can do is top it up, increase the allocation to the poor people. No, they don't do that. Narega is being very effectively killed by this government. In the process of killing the Gandhi family name, you are killing the people of this nation. Earlier, 100 days work was guaranteed. Now, with the lesser allocations by this government, ma'am, only 40 days work is uh, guaranteed. So, aapka revenge kis pe hai? if your revenge is on Congress party, please do it. By all means, do some political things to do that. But why are you taking the revenge on the people? You mm. cannot reduce the allegation to, uh, allocation to Narega and say that, you know, we are better than Congress. You cannot be. Unless and until you reach out to the pure, poor people, top up whatever your previous governments have done. Like what we've done in Telangana. We've topped up every government. Mm. In the last 70 years, whatever they've done, we've topped it up. Mm. In the last 70 years, no governments in Telangana could give water to every household. We gave. Mm. See, that is how you top up. You know, you, yeah. you draw a bigger line next to a smaller line, not erase the other line. So, I think you have to be end of the day a bigger person. People will very fondly remember leaders. Even the smallest of the corporators sometimes we see are remembered so fondly because there is a human approach to it. As an mm. in your face kind of advertisement, then people understand that it's just advertisement. Ke kar rahe. So, Aap, you think that the speech uh, that the Prime Minister made and the visits that the Prime Minister is doing, uh, it's not impacting uh, on the ground in Telangana? Not at all, ma'am. Yesterday, after the Prime Minister's rally, because it's my own constituency, I got the feedback from many people. Many people are saying, this is an election, but what is going to happen to us, we don't know. Because it's just an announcement. Whatever is made about the turmeric board, whatever is made about the railway projects, they are shilanya su hai. Project mm -hmm. katam to nahi hua hai. And this country, ma'am, has very bad experience where you just see the uh, shilanyas ka stones, but they never get finished. My my state, Congress party, Nehru ji ke era mein, 1963 mein they started a project which we finished. When we came back to power in 2014, we said this is to be finished. We finished it. So people have seen and have such bad experiences in this country. So if Modi ji would have put this same shila nine years back and finished it by now, people would believe it and BJP would have reaped a political benefit out of it. Hmm. Now in the mouth of the election, you come out and you know start a project. It is not going to fetch the votes. Hmm. And making crass remarks like this on the 
political party and on a leader who is loved by the people, who is responsible for the state formation itself, who was ready to give his life for the formation of the state. If you are making silly allegations like he wants this, he wants that, everybody in the world knows KCR gave up his political party for the state. When Congress betrayed us by taking back the announcement of Telangana, my leader himself went to the Congress party leader. He said, we don't need parties. Let us form a joint action committee. Let us fight for the state. That is his commitment. People know him for that. And now you are making such crass remarks on a tall leader like that. It doesn't suit the stature of the Honorable Prime Minister. You know, uh, till... Till this um, comment by the Prime Minister at the rally, one really wasn't sure which way the BRS is going to be, uh, because uh, you've not, you're not, your party is not part of the India Alliance. And uh, you know, in an interview to ANI, uh, you had said, and I'm going to quote: "There is no guarantee of." Today, uh, if today's India alliance will exist tomorrow, there will be state elections and seat sharing issues for the parliament election before that. The situation would be different after that, unquote. Now, you seem to be skeptical at that stage. You weren't pushing it away, but you seem to be skeptical about the longevity, longevity of the India alliance. So, which is why people were like, Haan, ye log idhar bhi ja sakte hai, udhar bhi ja sakte hai. Kuch pata nahi hai, uh, BRS ka, right? And even the India alliance partners were not pretty sure. But now you're Certainly after KTR's press conference and after uh, the Prime Minister's uh, speech, it is quite clear that you may not be part of the India Alliance, but you're certainly on an anti-Modi plank. Ma'am, we are against both the parties. We've been very clear. We are never a part of any of these alliances because both of them are betraying the people. Now, NDA, ma'am, for example, Honorable Prime Minister's NDA has 38 political parties, out of which 24 of them have zero members in Lok Sabha. Seven parties have one one member in Lok Sabha. Two parties have two two members in Lok Sabha. So essentially it is just the BJP with, you know, smaller parties that they managed to put together to say that, you know, we also have an alliance with many, many parties. In a INDA alliance where there are 26 parties, most of them are on the, uh, you know, better position compared to NDA. But still we are not part of any, any of the alliance because INDA alliance don't have any proper objective. They have no clue why they are an alliance. What they are saying is, we want to dislodge the BJP from power. Theek hai. But what is your alternative plan for the country? What are you going to do to the country? How will you share your seats? CPI and Congress are loggerheads in Kerala. How will you share the par parliament seats? In in uh, Bengal, again CPI, uh, Mamta Di, all of these guys fight. How will they share, share the seats? Amadmi Party. And Congress party, fight in Delhi and Punjab. How will they sh share the seats? So, you are making people a fool. What are you telling? You know, that in the state election, we will fight. If the parliament election comes, then there will be 12 votes. All the people will fight together. So, what will the voter do? Whom will he vote? First of all. Second thing, it's okay. Then, people will vote for the NDA. Let's assume that. But what is your plan? What will you do for the country? How will you generate wealth? You are promising. Like Honorable Rahul Gandhi ji came to my state. He promised heaven and earth which Telangana budget can never support. So if you are making false promises like this for the nation to the states, how will you even generate wealth? Hmm. We have a plan of generating wealth. That is what we have done with our state. We generate wealth, you, you do the welfare. But how will you generate wealth for the country? How are you better than NDA in generating wealth? You tell us that. What is your plan for the country? You don't. You will simply say, we are sharing seats, we want to dislodge uh, Modi. Okay, do it. But what is that the country is going to gain out of it? Congress party coming into power or INDA coming into power, how is it beneficial for a poor man? You tell that and then other parties who are neutral, like uh, Navin Patnaik ji hai, he's neutral, um, we are neutral. Many parties will become neutral, ma'am, I'm telling you, after these five state elections. Definitely there will be a lot of changes because pre-poll alliances have not worked in this nation. Post-poll mm -hmm. alliances usually at least worked, stayed. People like P.V. Narasimharao managed to stay in power for five full years. So, you know, there are many, many possibilities that can happen after a, uh, after the polls, but not before the polls. And if you don't go to the people with a clear agenda, why will they vote for you? Mm. How, you know, karikartas only not, you know, together work. How will they work? You're fighting in state election, in parliament election, you want to come together. Mm. Otherwise, in, in Bengal, you see, they kill each other. There are so many killings between political parties. In Kerala, we hear all the time people killing each other. How will they work together, you tell me? And what is this thing about saving democracy, saving democracy? You save the democracy by, you know, walking the talk. 
you are in power in Rajasthan today, Congress party. Why are you not saving democracy there? You are in power in Chhattisgarh. The, the atrocities on tribals, have you stopped? No, you cannot. So saving the democracy is ultimately saving the people, not dislodging BJP. Not that we are against. We want to dislodge the BJP as well. But with an alternate plan, we have a better plan. We will tomorrow advocate that plan when the parliament election times come. Hmm. But not now. This is not the time. Uh, the time will be right for you after the Telangana Absolutely. election. Absolutely. Our but you changed the name of election. your party even before that. Yes, ma'am. And see, ma'am, one more thing I'll tell you here. The hypocrisy of Congress party. You call yourself a national party. You have one agenda in Karnataka. You have one agenda in Telangana. You have another agenda in Madhya Pradesh. You talk about OBCs in Madhya Pradesh. But you don't talk about OBCs in Karnataka. Because Lingayats and Vakalingas population will come out then it will not help them in the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. They won't talk about OBC in Karnataka. But BRS, when we changed our name, our commitment is we have a universal policy. We asked for 33% women reservation bill 10 years back. We still stand on it. We asked for 33% OBC reservation 10 years back. We still have the same stand. 101 issues, we still have the same stand and we will have the same stand across the nation. Because we are people-centric party. We are not power-centric party. See, 1% becoming PM, 1% becoming CM. Kis kis garib ka pet barega ab bolye mujhe? Usse kya fayda hooga? Pani do, the water that is going waste into the sea, harness the water, give water to the farmer, kisan ko toda pani do, sinchai ka pani do. Tab kisi ka pet barega na? So, BRS policies are people-centric. We want to incentivize farmers. We want to incentivize women. We want to incentivize BD workers. That is our policy. What is the INDIA policy? Nothing. We want to share seats, we want to come to power and do what? Hmm. So, so they are going to be coming and uh, uh, campaigning in Telangana for uh, the India Alliance, for the Congress? <laughs> well, I have no idea. I haven't heard anything. Because Kamal like Nadji uh, said in Madhya Pradesh, he doesn't want the India Alliance rally. He, because it's a one-on-one <laughs> -on -one fight, right? It, it so, exposes the hypocrisy again, ma'am. If hmm. you are in alliance at the national level, why don't you want your alliance partners to, why don't you want, why are you hiding them? from mm. people of Madhya Pradesh. And why Rahul Gandhi ji talks about OBCs in Madhya Pradesh and not in Karnataka. Karnataka government had already done census. They are not releasing it. They should release it. Nitish ji had released it yesterday. Mm. So if you are not worried, why don't you release it in Karnataka? So now Rahul Gandhi came and campaigned also in yes. Telangana. Modi ji also came and campaigned. Now Modi ji says that uh, uh, KCR ji had gone to uh, Karnataka during the elections, helped the Congress there <laughs> and now uh, the Congress is uh, helping uh, oh in Telangana. God. Is that true? Oh my God. I, this is the wildest of the allegations, ma'am. We are direct opponents of Congress party in Telangana. Why will anybody and forget about my father who is such an astute politician, why will anybody in their sane mind help their own opponent in the next neighbouring state? So, mm. if, if, a, if Congress party is winning in Karnataka, that will definitely boost up a little bit at least courage of the Congress worker in Telangana. Why would we want to do that? Hmm. Yeah. Explain how because uh, for our overseas viewers uh, that, you know, that uh, your, the, the two states are adjacent. So just a little bit to the overseas viewers about how elections in Karnataka impact on election results in Telangana. How will that affect? No, first of all, if there are overseas listeners, ma'am, I would like to tell them that Honorable Modi ji's allegations are baseless, horrible and very politically counter-intuitive for any politician, astute politician to even think about doing. Second thing, Karnataka and Telangana share a huge border. Uh, many of our districts are together. Many of our farmers interact. Hamara roti beti ka sambandh hai bolte na. That's with both Karnataka and Maharashtra for us. So whatever happens in Karnataka, usually people discuss here. Whatever happens in Telangana, Karnataka also discusses. So now, our um, after the Congress party won in Karnataka and how they failed to deliver their promises, Karnataka people are making videos and sending it to us. That Congress failed us in every which way. They said they'll give 200 uh, units free power. They are not giving it. You know, don't believe Congress. These are the videos that we are getting from mm -hmm. Karnataka. So that is how impactful, you know, of uh, the elections will be of each other. Not to a great extent because BRS is way ahead. Congress is a very, very distant rival. But yet any astute politician will never support their own direct opponent in the neighboring state. Because then there will be some positive talk about, you know, your opposition party, which will not happen. And I don't know why Modi ji made such a sweeping allegation. Uh, 
absolutely untrue and absolutely counter intuitive to any astute politician to do and my so father is a star politician he will never do that your so your principal opponent is the congress in the state very that's very distant clear. ma'am very very distant because where would BJP, you say like please number 3 bjp will be number 3 congress will be you know probably about the same number that they got last time around 9 10 if at all they manage to get that and what is their uh, firstly you know anti incumbency yes or no uh, in telangana you love obviously say no but in uh, what is it that the congress uh, lacks in the state to be uh, sincerity uh, uh, ma'am okay. congress is never sincere and congress and telangana history you go way back they have betrayed us every time starting from 1942 when we were uh, the police action happened then Uh, after uh, merging us very forcefully with andhra another state where we were a happy independent state they merged all the conditions violated nobody spoke when we asked for telangana in 1969 350 of our students were killed by congress party so people of telangana have not forgotten and then in 2004 when congress party needed uh, our alliance in telangana they came to our home uh, they came to our leader they said let's do an alliance they promised to put telangana formation uh, in the common minimum program they put it they said in 2004 itself they'll form telangana but they delayed it by 10 years as a result many of our youth died telangana lost heavily in in terms of development in terms of funds it was never given to us uh, as we deserved not much funds were allocated during rashekar reddy's time to telangana so congress repeatedly betrayed us repeatedly even after the formation when we were fighting within the parliament never rahul ji spoke about telangana never once the sonia ma'am spoke about telangana we were in front of her standing for hours together asking for a separate high court for telangana never she spoke once saying that you know we formed a new state you should give them a new high court no never rahul ji said ki telangana needs its rights no now because there is election they want to come and you know jatau for a lot of pyar saying that you know we gave the state ha ah, that's that. what they say na ki <laughs> sonia ji ki wajah se to uh, state hai nahi to state hota nahi there's even a uh, temple sonia mata temple also <laughs> for her because uh, she is the one who uh, crafted Ma'am, their state. own pcc right now their own pcc the person who's their pcc now was earlier in tdp and the words he used for sonia madam was she is the mrutyu devata of telangana she killed 1200 youth she should come say sorry to people of telangana and only then she should come to telangana these were his own words now he turned the court he is a pcc president now all of a sudden and they speak about telangana it's very funny ma'am from far away you um, you probably can't understand these minor issues but people of telangana are like you know kya baat kar rahe who is this guy why is he in congress what is he talking about today he says sonia is telangana devata you are like yesterday you called her mrutyu devata today how did she become a auspicious devata hmm. it is not happening huh? and and we lost we lost a generation of growth ma'am 10 full years we never had any funds during rashekar reddy's time hmm. how will people of telangana forget all of that congress was in power here Uh, you know the, the the devata bit brings me to this whole <laughs> uh, question about uh, sanatan dharma and whether uh, that is an emotive issue at all in telangana at this uh, at this time how are people of telangana taken this because you know just as you're close to karnataka yes. you're close to tamil nadu also there are just five states in south india so um that comment by uh, udayanidhi stalin on uh, sanatan dharma and associating it with viral illnesses uh, you came out in support of sanatan dharma and you said that this is not acceptable how do people of telangana see that ma'am they don't really care about uh, religion as much in telangana because we are a very homogeneous society and after uh, the formation of telangana our honorable leader uh, ksr garu he made sure that every religion is respected and mm. he is very time and again people of telangana not only say that but we live by that practice that mm. you know aapka dharm apne ghar mein sahi hai whatever your dharm is as long as it is not intruding mine we are fine everybody is happily following their own dharm and when it comes to public places we respect each other we celebrate uh, ramzan officially we celebrate christmas officially we celebrate batukamma officially which is also a state festival and a very hindu festival which you have taken up on a very yes, large ma'am. scale and very you're very committed to that i've yes, seen yes ma'am yes ma'am. yeah it's a very beautiful festival and it's become international now that festival it has. i'm sorry if i am interrupting <laughs> you no that's but all then, right but uh, then like i said that are who uh, you know outside your state in uh, 
people didn't really know about it but now i know of uh, overseas indians uh, you know women taking up yes, buying new sarees for that uh, yes, occasion <laughs> it's become and it's it's all thanks to you that you you've revived that uh, celebration thanks to women of telangana who kept it alive for hmm. so many years um we did add a little bit of philip to the whole celebrations but it is fundamentally women of telangana who kept it alive so mm. in that sense we are a very homogeneous okay. society mm. ma'am and we respect each other so udayanidhi talents comments did not make much of an impact in telangana because religion is never a factor in telangana and that is the only re- reason why bjp will never do well in telangana they cannot disturb our fabric we are too closely in it a fabric between hindus muslims christians parsis we have a very strong parsi culture in hyderabad we are all very very closely in it there are a lot of sikhs so the disturbing telangana is not easy and in the last 10 years we've maintained it very well ma'am across the nation there have been some or the other instances of communal violence in telangana there is not even a single instance of communal violence in the last 10 years because our leader said i will not let it happen i will not let anybody disturb my uh ambience fiza kharab nahi hone dunga main that is what he says so that's why bjp can never find space ma'am that's why they make sweeping allegations like that on telangana and when it when we speak specifically about sanatan dharm i'm a very staunch very staunch religious person i follow hinduism very carefully uh very religiously and as long as people like me are alive nothing will happen to sanatan dharm nobody can do anything because it is something that you practice in your own homes apni khud ki aastha hai bazaar mein display karne wali cheez nahi hai aastha to apni apni hoti hai so that is how we follow and that is how we survived for thousands of years that is how that dharam is still alive so that apart politics apart so religion and state should hmm. be separate is what we believe in brs mein so you talking about secularism and secularism not just in in your homes and in society but also as a uh, as practiced in politics yes tell me what is your relationship your party's relationship with aimim it's so confusing for people who are outside the state <laughs> are they your rivals are they your political rivals are they opposing you are they your dost bandhu brata what are they for you they we are friendly parties ma'am we are never uh, partners of alliance we never shared any seats we are friendly parties we are friendly parties we have been friendly uh, that is our way of telling uh, the population of telangana that we can coexist everybody can coexist that is a simple logic that is how we keep kept the fabric very tightly knit very peaceful uh, earlier when congress was ruling telangana if they wanted a change of chief minister what they did was they would go to old city get some danga done change of chief minister so that was congress's policy use religion to get into power so we said that cannot happen either it is bjp who tries to polarize or it is congress who tries to use it for power we will not let it happen that is why we are friendly with aim aim asad bhai is our friend we will be friends if there is one person that uh, asaduddin owaisi doesn't roast in politics he roasts everybody <laughs> if there's one person who he doesn't roast it is your father Ji. and the sitting chief minister uh, kcr Ji. how come he, uh, he you manage that it's not management ma'am as i said my leader is a person who's very fair hearted so if he's your friend khul ke dost hai dushman hai to bahut hi khul ke dushman hai aisa nahi ki he'll you know hold his tongue or not say because it is not nice no he likes you he likes you he doesn't like you he doesn't like you so we like us how does that work in politics aise to nahi hota na politics <laughs> is all about compromise conflict management ye wo kaise not at all ma'am in the last 20 Uh, years of brs politics we've survived happily being upfront outright and i think after 75 years of independence all the party should try it out once hmm. people will love you more people will respect you more people will sail with you with all their heart as i said fondly people remember ma'am i remember my my many relatives many cousins many of them who are of my father's age they told me when vajpay ji was coming to speak in nizam college ground which is in the center of hyderabad they came from villages to just to hear him speak they had never approved of his ideology but they just came to hear him speak because he was a good speaker mm. and this is the time we are talking about when there was no communication no television except radio there is nothing but they came they heard him out and they still fondly remember 
And he speaks in this colloquial kind of yes, way, right? Yes, very, very brilliant speaker is. And when he was sitting next to Nitish Kumar, when he said something, and Nitish ji was like, bas, 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 bas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, no, 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 no. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. He said, my father is a very upright leader, man. He will not shy away from saying something just because it is not politically correct. If he feels it is correct, he will say it. And we survive in politics with truth. We forgotten, unfortunately, ma'am, in this country that the morals and ethics and truth has to be the cornerstone of politics. We forgot that. Now it has become something else: votes, money, religion, caste. These have become the cornerstone of politics, and that is not right. BRS will change that. You'll see, ma'am. After maybe five, six, seven years, we'll do the podcast again. Yes, you'll see the change. No, no, I want it before <laughs> that. I want to know what it is like. So let me get to this uh, this bit about uh, how is conversation like in your home when you are there, your dad is there, your brothers there, they, all of you in the thick of politics <laughs> and things like that. What is the conversation like in your home? Like, do you have like idli on the side and then uh, what you did is wrong? What, how is the conversation? My dad is very, very typical Indian father. <laughs> Conversation is one side. वो कहेंगे और हम सुनेंगे. That's it. Okay. Point one. When it's family, that is how it is, and we always kept it like that. Hmm. He says and we follow. Simple as that. Because we believe in him. Hmm. He's our father, and as a leader, we've seen him work for the people. So we just follow what he says. Hmm. Uh, when it comes to politics, uh, as I said, for me at least, I tell him whatever gets to my knowledge, whatever people represent. I just share that with him, and then it is his decision. His uh, whatever party discussion, Politburo discusses. That is how the decisions are made. Dinner table conversations are usually about kids. Mm. Uh, what this uh, person, your children, uh, and, my uh. two children, and brother's two children. What everybody is doing. What has he done? So it is just about pulling each other's leg. Very funny, very jovial. My father in private is a very very a jovial person. Makes mm. us all laugh. So it's it's only personal time when we are together. So tell me, uh, you uh, went, you lived in America, you worked out there. What made you change your mind and come back to India and try out politics? And why <laughs> why did you leave that kind of uh, lifestyle, working for an MNC and then quitting and coming? Ma'am, uh, if you live in uh, US and you actually live there, not just visit but live there, nobody hum, no matter how many years you live there, they can't pronounce your name. That ticked me off. <laughs> so every time you pick up the phone, they're like, "Khavicha, Khavicha." I'm like, "Yar, I'm like, why am I here? You know, what is this place? Why am I even here?" Then my husband shared the same opinion. So when my what's his name? Anil. Anil ji. Anil. <laughs> Anil. I'm <laughs> ah, sure they, they would twist it. You Starbucks know, coffee. A <laughs> hundred things they would say, and we used to get very ticked off. I'm like, "Why are we here?" Okay. Then my older son was born, and he. we We didn't want him away from the grandparents. We wanted him to have that, you know, that love, that pyar, that grandparents. The way they spoil them. I said he doesn't deserve to live like this, you know, away from the family. So I, on his first birthday, we came back home, Hyderabad, to celebrate, and we suddenly overnight decided we are staying back. So I came back for my very personal reason. But one once I came back, it was very very heated uh, moment that was happening for the state. I just got sucked into it. Hmm. I did not come back to participate in the moment. I came back for my own personal reason that I wanted my children to have the love of parents. Which year was this? Uh, this is two thousand four, man. Four. Two thousand four August. I came back. Okay. Then we just stayed back. Hmm. We never went back again. Okay. No regrets <laughs> at all. Not at all. I'm very happy. Yeah. Uh, America, jao, dekh kya jao. Jine lai country to nahi hai mere khayal se. Okay. Jao, dekho, seeko, bas a jao. But you do visit. Uh, you do go abroad. You're going to London again. Yeah. Uh, do you see a change in perception about India, like when you were there in uh, the early 2000s, and now when you visit? Do they is there more awareness about India? There is, ma'am. Um, I'm very proud. I'm an engineer, especially a computer mm. science engineer. So I'm very proud that once this software engineers influx happened, 70s was mostly doctors, scientists who went from India, settled down in US, etc. but i think they were not very vocal or whatever the perception was still that india is very backward snake charmer type india mm. but after 99 after 98 after 2000 the whole world now believes that the smartest people alive on the earth are indians 
कि एक कैसे कर सकते हैं यू नो दे आर सो गुड एट मैथ दे आर सो गुड एट इंजीनियरिंग दे आर सो गुड एट कंप्यूटर्स सो द परसेप्शन हैज़ कम्प्लीटली चेंज थैंक्स टू आर पीपल थैंक्स टू आर इंजीनियर्स एंड डॉक्टर्स एवरीवेयर इवन द वाइट हाउस डॉक्टर्स टीम मस्ट आई एम श्योर हैव फाइव इंडियन डॉक्टर्स अदरवाइज इट विल नॉट बी पॉसिबल दैट्स अ टैलेंट दैट वी हैव सो वेरी थैंकफुल वेरी प्राउड वेर इन अमेरिका वो यू इन मैम आई स्टडीड इन द साउथ मिसिसिपी Huh. and then i worked in memphis elvis's hometown huh. okay <laughs> then i lived uh, briefly hmm. uh, in new jersey ma'am where my husband was working do you go anywhere now yes. uh, in america it's like pehle hota tha you went to an indian store and you heard uh, indian hindi. languages or <laughs> hindi or but you go anywhere now you can go uh, to the niagara falls or you can go to the west coast somewhere you will hear telugu spoken yes everywhere yes the telugu association there like hundreds of telugu <laughs> associations so much of division and yet you will hear the language spoken everywhere yes ma'am there is a joke in andhra and telangana they say you go to california silicon valley stand up there and yell out srinivas then 30 people will turn around and see you know that's the most okay. common name balaji ka naam hai yeah. so that is what we joke about you yeah. know the moment you say srinivas there are telugu people all over the place all over yes ma'am and very talented people very hard working people so huh. they manage to go there make good name uh thousands of jobs are you know done by telugu people very proud of them as well again and uh, hmm. um the the boom of engineering colleges i think is what led to that uh, growth hmm. and uh, good good things ma'am good things you feel good okay <laughs> now i am going to come to a little bit of a controversy you oh. came yes okay. you know i'm going to come to that <laughs> right um I want to uh, get to the Delhi liquor scam and the South Syndicate. And can you give me your version? And before that, I want to run a little bit of uh, for overseas viewers a small primer as to what this uh, whole scam and its its connection with Delhi. Even though Kavita Ji is from South India, uh, but still, just a short primer as to what that uh, scam is all about. It is believed that K Kavita and a cabal known as the South Group arranged rupees hundred crores in cash for the Aam Aadmi Party in return for wholesale dealership for Indo Spirits, which allegedly earned a profit of a hundred and ninety-two crores in excise in the year twenty twenty-one twenty-two. The Enforcement Directorate is investigating the matter, and Kavita Ji has been questioned several times. The ED alleged in a charge sheet submitted to the court that a part of the alleged rupees hundred crores kickbacks generated in the scrap Delhi excise policy was used in the 2022 Goa Assembly election campaign of the Arvind Kejriwal-led Aam Aadmi Party. So now I'm going to come to you and ask you about this: that what happened? What was this South grouping, and how did you get roped in into this? Ma'am, uh, I have to give you a disclaimer as well. um matter subjudiced but yet the allegations made on me are completely baseless i have no connection whatsoever about whatever the agencies or the bjp spokesperson or bjp mp talk about and keep blaming me that i am a part of a scam uh, and the scam number also keeps changing every day in the papers you see uh in the beginning it was like a 20000 crore scam then a 10000 crore then it now became a 100 crore scam and now i think somebody submitted in the court saying it is only a 20 crore scam so i have no clue what the scam is all about or nobody has um that is where many people doubt that the agencies are not fair and uh, the propaganda is more than what actually happened or if at all anything had happened or not that is yet to be proven yet, yet to be probed into and but the issue here is if the probe goes on forever and you know takes a high or low depending on the political scenario outside then people are by day becoming more and more sure that this is a politically motivated uh, probe i don't want to call witch hunt because it's very derogatory for women but it is something like that where you want to pick a particular party raid them call them back to offices time and again try to disturb them or dislodge them of their course uh, but brs is a very strong party we have seen many ups and downs in the movement also so no matter what they try they raided half of our government they raided many of our mlas for it ed cbi all of that i am one among them it is nothing specific i am not very special unfortunately they raided many of them but i am in news because my uh, good luck is that i am uh, ksr's daughter 
so i am always loved and propped up there uh, but i have nothing to do with it and time will prove so okay uh, your friends also were uh, were raided uh, your accountant uh, what about that do people pay the price for being close to k kavita <laughs> looks like it ma'am looks mm. like it uh, they've done that they've done that not only to me as i said half of my cabinet their families their brothers one of my ministers uh, son was beaten so badly by the it guys uh, he had to be immediately taken to the emergency that was the situation during uh, questioning during uh, the raid they during came the home to my minister's home they raided them uh, asked certain questions i think there was an argument or a tiff so the guys beat him up and he had to be taken to emergency so people know it people know it in telangana that the excesses of agencies are there everywhere uh, but as i said you know uh, courts in this country are protecting uh, the victims victims like me and many other political victims courts are the one who are standing by today also i saw that court uh, reprimanded ed very badly saying that without proofs what are you doing and all that so that's the only hope ma'am judiciary is the only hope in this uh, nation in a era where politics and uh, uh, political parties parties in power are using agencies to curtail their political opponents so you are cooperating 100% with uh, the with the entire probe like i know uh, there were several occasions where our cameras were following you where you go every time you go for <laughs> it our cameras are following yes, you because you know it, it it is a news story i'm sorry for the uh, you know it seems like we are uh, you know there too much in the face but these are news stories and yes. this is what uh, news cameramen end oh, up doing that's your job that's your right? job right and uh, you you submitted those phones that itself was a very strong image where you held that plastic bag with all your <laughs> cell phones inside and said i'm giving my cell phones also yes, so what happened with that cell phone thing were there many cell phones what was that controversy ma'am this is a new cell phone the hmm. new one the iphone 15 that came i'm yeah. i'm a tech person i like new stuff hmm. so i keep changing the versions so i kept changing i i don't know who's following me who's monitoring me that the government apparently was monitoring they said she changed 10 phones 9 phones i said but i have all those phones because the phone that was used i was using until yesterday i'll probably give it to my younger son hmm. or you know somebody who's close to me or somebody is in need so that is how i did all those phones were in and around my vicinity working in my home somewhere or the other so when ed said that she broke all the phones i'm like Okay, what are you talking about? You have never even called me once. You have never even asked me what has happened, and there are allegations in the courts that are being submitted. So I'm um, like a little taken aback. Then I said, no, I need to clear myself to people. That is why I just said, let me display all my phones with the IEM number or that number, and then I took them all, gave it to them. But I don't know what happened after that. So tell me, it's more than a year since this thing has been going on. Uh, now it seems as if the Aam Aadmi Party is the one which is in focus during the the raids, the questioning. People are going to jail. Uh, whereas uh, the the heat seems to be off from you. To people, it seems like that. Does it appear Ma'am, like that, that? That is the way they're portraying. But if you look at the Telugu media. every day there is some or the other news about this case every day uh, even yesterday this mp nizamabad uh, he said kavita will be arrested soon day before yesterday he said the same thing and the day before that he said the same thing every day there is news despite having a court order asking the politicians to not speak so when uh, this particular person keeps taking my name and says that i'm going to jail ed gives you a notice so people put one and one together i don't have to do anything so ed is serving a notice and a bjp leader is saying that she's going to jail so what are people thinking that the agencies are working in the direction of the parties so that is for the agencies and that is for the government to decide whether they have to be objective or at least appear to be objective if you are not being objective not only not only brs every party in this country every state parties have been raided when there was election in punjab punjab cms that that a point of time channi ji was there his uh, uh, you know siblings were raided his son was raided stalin ji was raided his family was raided when there were tamil nadu elections chatisgarh i think the congress party just was trying to have a meeting all their mls were raided in chatisgarh at that point of time so you you see the timing is 
very mm. very uh, picked out and looks like it is being done on purpose. But there was nothing happening uh, last year, no, for you to be uh, picked up and ma'am, there was no every day election. there was news, ma'am. Every day there was news. The process is the punishment, and that is what the government is doing. So every day a Telugu newspaper carries a banner item that when is she getting arrested? So that is a controversy for a person who is in public. Mm. It is not actually. what you've done or not done no matter 100 times you say i have not done anything every day a popular newspaper is printing something or the other trying to get the conversation on the media on. in uh, telangana says that hardly anybody says anything against kcr or their family <laughs> because they have <laughs> very good relations with will, the media i will send it to you ma'am i will send you every time there is a negative news i'll send it to you saying <laughs> ma'am your your whatsapp will be flooded <laughs> <laughs> with okay uh, because one rarely sees i mean uh, frankly on the in the national media for almost like 6 7 months there's see, not much see but that's a strategy of bjp no ma'am that they want this news to spread inside telangana hmm. not across I that see. is what they are doing very successfully how how does agencies selectively leak news to one or two channels you tell me that's happening not only in my case in everybody's case mm. and courts have taken serious notice of that uh, incident that agencies are doing this not you know, in you my case in many cases you don't want to use the word witch hunt but for a long long period it seemed like you were a single woman battling this and uh, neither your party nor pardon me for saying this but your family also uh your your father and your brother didn't seem to come out openly uh saying uh, in in your support they were not there was no outrage which was visible that's a, that's a very wrong perception ma'am mm. first of all when you know that the opponent party is trying to provoke statements out of you trying to disturb your peace by raiding your mlas by raiding your ministers not only in my case in when any one of our ministers was raided when any one of our mlas were caught call to ed party never gave any official statement party's legal cell is there which guided them which stood by them which supported them that's it mm. what is the party why should the party get derailed from its regular activity mm. we want to kill the objective of the other person's uh, strategy so the their whole strategy is to disturb us we don't want to get disturbed we want to keep doing our good work that we do and that is how we can kill this narrative so did your father and your brother think that you're strong enough to deal with this on your own see inside the family as uh, their daughter their sister they guided me what is to be done they extended all support my husband husband side's family was absolutely like a rock solid standing by me saying that we know you've not done nothing wrong you are in politics you'll have to face this i am hmm. uh, and as a party person as a party mlc party's entire legal team stood by me they came to ed office they supported me in every which way we put the case in the court party's legal cell is taking care of everything you know i spoke uh, uh, to the daughter of a very senior politician uh, she was talking about uh, life during uh, you know when her father was imprisoned during emergency and she was just a, a small kid in school Jeez. and uh, the teacher would say aur tumhare papa jail mein kab niklenge jail se jail mein hi rahenge तो तुम्हारे पापा जेल वाले हैं तो कुछ किया होगा ना तो जेल में डाला यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ टॉन्ट हाउ डू चिल्ड्रन इन पॉलिटिकल फैमिलीज डील विद दिस काइंड ऑफ ओवर एक्सपोजर इन द मीडिया एंड क्रूअल स्टेटमेंट्स दैट माइट बी डन डिलिबरेटली और नॉट डिलिबरेटली मैम आई गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल आई नेवर स्पोक अबाउट इट इन पब्लिक बट आई विल टूडे माई ब्रदर सन वॉज बॉडी शेम्ड बाई द करंट पी सी सी इन अ वेरी बैड in a very 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 bad man the kids they're not in politics he body shames them and he says oh but i can say anything because he's kcr's grandson i'm like no you can't in the whole telangana said you can't they literally stood by us um luckily for me ma'am both of my sons uh, i've always communicated to them i told them because of my profession you will have to deal with a lot of negative comments unnecessary intrusions people keep texting them on the whatsapp a lot of requests and sometimes negative comments and there was this time when uh, ed had displayed both my phone numbers on screen without my permission although i'm not accused or anything they just displayed my phone there were thousands of messages there were thousands of phone calls phone constantly ringing i just shut it off after a day I didn't want to appear to be scared that's why I kept it on but it was constantly ringing luckily for me 
thank god and thank to the sincerity of my party 99% of the messages were positive they like akka we know we are with you akka we know we are with you there is nothing wrong with you we are with you be brave this is what the message is said but yet my phone number was made public i am a woman what about my privacy what about protection what about these you know eloquent speeches that these leaders give on the floor of the parliament they just put my number there they can't do that that is why uh, my kids especially my two sons i keep communicating with them that you know better please keep this in your mind unfortunately my profession is like that and india as a democracy has not matured to that extent ki profession is separate personal life is separate so we will one day as a society but right now there is a lot of hatred so please be careful is what i tell them so both my sons have instagram accounts but they have a private account uh so and they refused to share a lot of pictures with me they said we will not tag you i said no problem don't do that <laughs> you do your stuff you live your life uh, once in a while i wish them for birthdays etc on instagram but i'm also fairly private i don't put out a lot of pictures and all which my team doesn't like me too much for but yet mm. i don't because i know because this the blow back a lot of blow back on the kids mm. which i cannot take it do uh, do they tell you that amma don't do this leave politics do they say that <laughs> to you no 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 never uh, when this case was happening i was constantly in the last one now fear is the most toughest time and another tough time for me was when i lost the election mm. uh, both times both of my sons told me only one thing you are the devil i know you'll be strong <laughs> <laughs> just a son to say that <laughs> both of them said even the being supportive thing. they have to use the word devil <laughs> she right. said you are the devil you can do it i said yes i can do it i'm there i'm, okay. I'm going to stay strong <laughs> new age lingo <laughs> new age lingo I, i definitely took it as a compliment <laughs> okay. okay let's come to the women's reservation bill you're headed to london so uh, tell me what what you going to speak uh, there i mean of course the speech you won't tell us but what do you feel uh, is like there are many women politicians who have said it's too little too late uh, putting it together with the census is a wrong thing to do bring it into focus right now bring it into implementation right away what is your view about it ma'am first of all i think we should thank our uh, uh, you know leaders who were there during the time of independence it could be ambedkar ji it could be nehru ji it could be gandhi ji anybody all of them without women have to put up much fight directly gave us voting rights this is the first thing i'm going to open my speech with in london mm. because india as a nation never discriminated we in fact always put women on the pedestal different story many people can't uh, digest that fact and treat them ill etc uh, but yet we are a amazing nation we always respected an individual as an individual the religion also says the same thing that you know you are just a separate soul you doesn't matter you are a man or a woman the how do you perform how you live live your life that is what matters and i have in my life always seen strong women my grandmother her mother my mother everybody very strong women so the lifestyle is such unfortunately negativity has spread across the world when the objectifying of women started from the western world which percolated across the globe the negativity started and uh, you know dismissing women for just being eye candy started but otherwise in our culture we were always respected very well unfortunately that did not translate into political positions hmm. like even during uh, independence movement there were so many women that we can still see in the pictures and in fact women at that point of time said we don't want quota sarojini naidu herself said we don't want quota because we will come into uh, elections we will win the elections it is a democracy that is what they were hoping but then by 1970s something changed too much westernization or too much ob- objectification of women whatever happened happened and there was this protectionist attitude by the men that ki nahi nahi isko ghar mein rakhna chahiye bahar nahi jaane dena hai so then political participation reduced women in workforce reduced women entrepreneurs never came up that is when in 1970s many women started saying no no now we need a quota because you are not letting us come on our own now mm. we need a quota mm. and from then it started and in fact at that time uh united nations declared 1972 i think ma'am subject to correction the topic of that year was that women situation in the world or mm. something like that so then for the first time ever our country got a entire report done see what is the halat of women in this country what mm. is the status of women from then a lot of discussion started from then a lot of schemes started coming up exclusively for women to promote education empowerment business participation etc 
and that is when political participation discussion came up then local body uh, you know rights were given reservation was done once they gave 33% in local body now many states have more than 50% women who have come up mm. because women are natural leaders we lead the home mm. we lead the society you know we create good citizens for this whole nation so we know how to lead if if his mother was not there shivaji would never have been what he is and we would mm. not have remembered him at all so that is the potential women have and we always knew but then in the politics we could not take a front seat or lead yeah there's only one chief minister woman chief minister in this country right now Currently. yes yeah but ma'am if you look at uh, the entire southeast asia politics we were the first nation to give a woman prime minister yeah and america still doesn't have a woman president hmm. so but did it translate that indira ji could bring out a lot of women into politics no hmm. so something changed somewhere uh, whether it is a market or the objectification or the necessity that men felt ki once women goes out they are not safe something had happened i am just trying to analyze it like a neutral person not any political person because after that sonia mm. ji was also there but she could also not bring out women mm. jaya madam was there in in uh, tamil, nadu. tamil nadu um she tried her best mamta ji is there now she is giving 33% and more in fact in tmc seats to women navin patnaik ji himself he gives 33% so uh, here and there you know where leaders who are very committed they are trying to push women but in general unless and until there is a protection from the constitution that women have to be there parties are never going to give that we understood in the 75 years of experience and it could be because of anything because of the world situation or india situation or the poverty or the insecurity whatever it is at this juncture now we understood that it is important we passed the bill but when did this government pass the bill 9 and 1/2 years after their time has lapsed despite them promising both the times in 2014 and 2019 manifestos they said we are committed to women's reservation but they did not pass now at the fag end of their second term they are passing it and yes it is very rightful for all of us women and you should also very strongly demand ma'am that 2011 census can be applied for women reservation and it in fact it should come into force right now starting from our election in telangana it should come it can come into force because based on 2011 census they made hundred schemes so they cannot say that no no we can't use that we have to go back to census now if you are actually saying that going back and you will not let the women contest in this parliament election and this five state election in 2024 and 2023 2023 huh? then people will understand it was just a tokenism and bjp will never gain anything political out of it if you just want to go around india campaigning that we have done women's bill we've done women's bill women unfortunately are not so dumb anymore they are mm. very well educated unfortunately for them you mean yes huh. unfortunately for the men folk i mean and mm. the political parties we are not dumb mm. we understand that we are just utilizing it as a election stunt and not in real because women ma'am today if you look at it more women are voting than men mm. women are not asking husbands whom to vote yeah even if the husband says ki isko dalna hai ulta hi karke kar <laughs> <laughs> पति ने बोला है तो उल्टा करना ही है और इवन इफ द फादर हैज सेड यू बिकॉज़ नाउ वोटिंग एज इज 18 राइट वोटिंग एज इज 18 या सो दैट डिसीजन वुमेन आर टेकिंग मैम नाउ दे आर दे अंडरस्टैंड पॉलिटिक्स हम्म पार्टी शुड रिस्पेक्ट इट पॉलिटिशियन शुड रिस्पेक्ट इट मोर मेन शुड रिस्पेक्ट इट एंड इमीडिएटली इंप्लीमेंट इट इज पॉसिबल ओके नो टेल मी सेल्फ मेड वुमेन इन पॉलिटिक्स इज दैट पॉसिबल और इज इट यूजुअली इट्स जस्ट लाइक you know somebody's daughter somebody's uh, wife Ma'am, they are the we, only ones who if we implement the the reservation today one or two elections you'll only get behan beti ma koi na koi political like it family, was in the say. panchayat levels at yes. one huh. but ek do term ke baad mein change ho jayega more women will want to come in if there is hope when you know there is space women will prepare ma'am women are very smart young mm. girls now are looking at instagram when you look at the age from 13 to 35 or 40 years i think instagram users are there and they are very keen to listen to what your politician is saying what are the policies that are being made and i was so surprised and felt so happy when we held this uh, round table conference in uh, for the women's bill students came in one student asked me ma'am you are talking about women's bill but what about transgender reservation i was so happy 
आई सेट वाव यार ये लड़की तो बैठ के सुन रही है यू नो वॉट एवर वी आर सेंग इट्स नॉट फॉर फन दैट देव कम आई फील्ट सो गुड मैम सो वुमेन एट दैट एज इफ दे कैन क्वेश्चन दे वर फिफ्टीन पार्लियामेंटेरियन सिटिंग ऑन द स्टेज शी टुक द माइक शी आज मी आ क्वेश्चन इन यू आर प्राइवेट मेम्बर्स ड्राइव सो वी गेव ऑल दीज एम पीज हू केम वी ड्राफ्टेड अ प्राइवेट मेम्बर बिल रिक्वेस्टिंग दैम टू इंट्रोड्यूस इट इन द पार्लियामेंट सो शी एक्चुअली आज मी कि आपके प्राइवेट मेम्बर बिल में इज देयर ट्रांसजेंडर्स राइट्स और नॉट आई सेट नो नो वी हैव पुट इट इन माई प्राइवेट मेम्बर्स बिल वी सेट ट्रांसजेंडर शुड बी considered hmm. given a hmm. certain quota as well hmm. but well the government's bill doesn't have it different story but if if a girl can question like that more imagine awareness she yeah. can lead tomorrow she will think about politics so if there is scope ma'am if there is hope that there is already reservation women will prepare and come ma beti behan ka ira khatam ho jayega hona bhi chahiye but five states in south india and successive elections and never has there been after jailalita ji never has the been even a single woman who has been aspirational or you know ke ha ye ho sakti hai chief minister wo aate nahi hai in on all the five states and even now those uh, telangana is going to poll you're not a chief minister candidate ma'am uh, why south india where in north india you tell me after uh, mayavati was there yeah, right but after but that, after that there's after been nobody that, yeah that's so vasundra ji was there vasundra, everybody huh. said that their own party put her aside so leadership once you are in a position of a cm or in that league then the gender will stop mattering you are a strong leader or a weak leader that's it so to get to that level is the struggle once mm. you get 33% reservation you are creating young leaders they will lead ultimately now who becomes what is a matter of talent hmm. and their dedication to the field just like any field politics is a very very competitive field you are not going to get reservation for the top post ma'am never ever so the young girls out there you will get a reservation for the basic post you better be prepared after that and women politicians are often seen always put down that oh ye bahut emotional hai ye bahut temperamental hai ye maverick hai badi jaldi gusse ho jati hai she starts crying she starts getting angry has a chip on her shoulder so when a man yells and screams uh, and uses abusive language he is not put down as much as a woman who is considered uh, you know who who might have a meltdown at some stage and she's immediately branded as a maverick as do you feel that kind of judgmental attitude towards women politicians uh no luckily not so much uh, mm. at least in my case i have not seen people calling me ki she can't handle uh, pressure or whatever everybody uh, told me or at least i've seen the comments in general that she's strong she's capable uh but you're right A lot of people try to dismiss women, saying that they won't understand or they can't take it. Uh, in fact, one one such journalist showed his phone to me. Um, he was showing me some mm-hmm. crime scene fo- photographs, so that you know we attend to the case. Then he said, "Ma'am, I don't think you can look at it." I said, "Of course I will." What are you talking about? So there is a perception, inbuilt perception, that we are weak, but I think that is our strength. and for me ma'am i really f- believe that it is my strength because when a person in need comes to me i respond to him much better than any male politician that i have seen because i understand the pain one day a lady bought his son to me the boy had, had some uh, kidney issue he was not able to pee for 5 6 days the moment i looked at the boy i said okay are isko gaadi mein bitao pehle hospital le jao baad mein baat karte hain so that is a quick response that women give because i could feel the pain of the mother i can see the pain in her eyes and i will respond maybe men not so much few mm. men probably will but women i think that weakness we can convert it into strength mm. as in quickly responding as in quickly attending as in quickly trying to deliver and solve their problem so it is a strength we should have a chip on our shoulder we should really react to everything very quickly fast but make sure that it meets a logical end and helps them instead of you know so Going use that empathy around. factor as Absolute. a strength Absolute. not to curb that empathy factor not at all not no. at all and uh, to be reactive and to get angry and stuff like that is not wrong it is not once you stop responding ma'am then you will not work hmm. suppose if somebody comes and tells you that this is my problem and you are like acha acha theek hai baad mein baat karte then what's the point you are in a field especially in politics i believe empathy is a must Hmm. for both men and women hmm. otherwise you can't react you won't understand you won't hmm. feel their pain so why will you attend to their work hmm. so end of the day politics is all about trying to help the people you know live a better life 
lead a better life trying to find solution you will not find a solution until and unless you feel that pain in it now as uh, you know you speak english and hindi very fluently Ma'am. urdu and hindi or hindustani whatever you want to call it um being a leader from south india uh, do you see that hindi anti hindi movement uh, gaining strength in south india and is that specific just to tamil nadu and karnataka or is it there in telangana and andhra pradesh too ma'am i think kerala also sometimes say but then they are global citizens they are everywhere so they hmm. understand speak hindi and multilingual uh, tamil nadu we've seen a lot of resistance and karnataka started it during the elections especially uh, with uh, amul versus nandini milk and hmm. all that but i think it was more of a congress's uh, stunt at that point of time because when you live in bangalore when you go to bangalore you see every other person every, talking yeah. but yes say having said that um i also personally don't like it when you put down telugu hmm. and when you say no no hindi is national language yes hindi is a beautiful language i love hindi i love hindi old songs uh, my favorite poet in fact is uh, dinkar i read him a lot I, i just love poetry urdu or hindi or whatever but at the same time telugu also is equally sweet and it should get its own space and that is the beauty of our country you give space to telugu you give space to tamil you give space to kannada also hindi not just hindi and not anything else so that conversation has to be alive ma'am if you do not converse on these difficult issues then our identities will just get mingled up in the whole chaos so mm. i strongly feel hindi being a brilliant language mm. hindi is supported extremely well in hyderabad telangana most of the south indian um, the people love hindi films they watch it they enjoy it but yet you can't disrespect my own mother Finally I want to ask you about yours are you going to stand for state elections are you going to stand for Lok Sabha what what is your view where are you going where are you headed <laughs> ma'am I'm a humble soldier whatever party says I have to do Are you politically correct <laughs> statement to mat do na podcast mein to bolna hai dena chahiye women should learn how to be politically correct you know Haan. we are getting the bill now soon so we got the bill well the reservation will get it soon okay. so so कहाँ पे है एम्बिशन किस तरफ है वाई शाई नो नो आई एम नॉट शाई आई एम नॉट शाइंग अवे फ्रॉम एनी थिंग वॉट एवर पार्टी सेस मैम आई कैन डू दैट इफ दे वॉन्ट मी टू फाइट दिस इफ दे वॉन्ट मी टू फाइट दैट वेर एवर दे वॉन्ट टू पुट मी आई एल डू दैट वे वुड यू सी योर सेल्फ आई मीन वे डू यू थिंक इज अ मोर चैलेंजिंग रोल और समथिंग दैट विल गेट यू गोइंग इज इट एट एट द नेशनल लेवल और वुड इट बी एट द स्टेट लेवल and both have equal challenges if you are at the state level there are execution issues mm. you have to literally be on the ground working till the last mile delivery if you are at national level it is policy issues where you have to really work deep down into the details trying to see which section is getting affected which section is not getting benefited like how with the women's reservation bill where the obcs are not represented at a policy level so we need to work for that things like that so both have their own challenges and i'm happy politics is a full plate ma'am you get to deal with everything and anything because aadhi raat ko phone aa jata hai didi light chali gayi hai so you know you have to do that 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 too <laughs> so how do you take the uh, accusation of dynasty politics which is hurled at your uh, party all the time and other regional parties how do you uh, chal- how do you cope with that kind of allegation that again as i said ma'am is a south east asian issue not only here in bangladesh you see that in sri lanka you see that in pakistan you see that i think as a society uh in the southeast asia or mostly in asia we are too taken by our parents whatever they do you are like just too in awe of them what they do when you look at japan even today they bend down so much you know to respect their elders etc hum bhi hamesha paav chu lete hain so that is imbibed in our culture so a doctor's son will naturally become a doctor most of the times that is how it is um at least we've seen amitabh bachchan's son is into films so you can't probably imagine him any other way i think it's basically our uh, brain which thinks like that in the entire uh, mm. asian countries so it's not a new thing it will not end soon and uh, there's no purpose or a point of ending it also when people want to end it they will end it hmm. as i said in the beginning i lost an election why did you lose an election i lost an election because of my performance not because i am somebody's daughter not because of somebody else or whatever it is so we have to deal with it people have to take a decision not political parties okay i'm going to conclude by asking this one question which i ask all my guests which is about mental health mm-hmm. uh, i asked a little bit about it earlier with regard to your family yes. um 
you know, as a politician, as a woman politician who has to balance home and career and a career which makes demands which are not, you know, regulated like in many other jobs, you suddenly have people from your constituency or from your party, suddenly 20 people coming for dinner, you have to organize that. At the same time, up upheavals of uh, of living in the limelight all the time. How difficult is it to keep your keep yourself centered and what do you do for keeping your uh, mental balance uh, in life? I'm keeping yourself centered is essential, not only if you're a politician, but even otherwise. Hmm. That has to happen. I wake up very early, do my puja, part, meditation by the time the sun comes up. So that is my time, that two hours from 3.30 to 5.30, I am happily... A.M.? A.M. in my bliss doing it. Otherwise, you are no, please for the whole this day. No, 3.30 to 5.30 in the morning. This it's typical amazing, man. Now you are doing amazing. the stereotype that South Indians who are in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in but that's a perfect thing to do. Really? You know, once you do that, then the you, are, you are done. Not suprabhatam, it's, it's your own prayers. A lot of other prayers are there. Okay. You work out, you do your puja, you organize everything. My son wakes up at 6.30, he has to go to school. So before 6.30... I better sort out my day, my stuff. So that's what I do. Okay. So if I'm late, I'm traveling back from consciency, maybe I come home by 1, 1.30, then that day I try to wake up with him at 6.30. But otherwise I'm up early. Hmm. So I can organize my day. I, I like that spending that 6.30 to 7.30 with the kids when they're getting ready to school, etc. Hmm. Because that kind of connects us throughout the day, very hmm. fresh in hmm. their heads. And uh, feel very good as a mother to attend to their duties at mm. that time. And that is a really good balancer. And mm. once they leave to school, then we are off. Uh, is the pressure time. of, how do you cope with the pressure of social media? Uh, do you switch yourself off from it? Because I I met with, I spoke with a, a film actress who said that, because she's there on Instagram all the time. And I said, like, I saw some of the comments that come your way. A uh, lot of body shaming that happens for her, even though she's extremely beautiful. Uh, so she says, oh, that you can be certain. None of us look at the comment section because that's the only way to keep your mental balance. Does social media impact upon uh, upon politicians too, especially women politicians? Uh, yes, because uh, in Telangana, we wanted to use social media for a positive change. As in somebody could tweet me their problem, I can respond, etc. That was the idea. Um, uh, I did do that for a bit. And as you rightly said, there's a lot of negativity. Then I said... Uh, I put, I will put some team or a person to take care of my social media to tell me if there is anything important that is to be responded. Mm. So now I don't look at my social media comments or, you know, uh, sarcasm, etc. But uh, if somebody is genuinely in some kind of a trouble, we reach out to That's them. That's for your mental them. peace, for your health. Yeah, it's not worth it. Man. It's, it's not, not worth uh, listening to somebody who just wants to be negative. Would for, you advise no that reason. to young women too who are getting into politics to to uh, to keep that distance from uh, in from social media? No, we should be on social media. It is absolutely essential. But as governments, we should also have very stringent protective mechanism for both girls and boys uh, that you cannot take cyberbullying easily. If somebody is bullying you online, you please take it to your teacher or mother or if required, we can take it to the police station. So that is one area we as a country are lacking. We are not mm. focusing on cyberbullying and cyber security issues. If somebody is constantly, you know, posting negative comments on you, it accounts to bullying. Mm. It is not, you know, uh, and nowadays bots do it, mm. uh, you know, more than people. So you block the bot, simple as that and move mm. on in life. But if a person whom you know or if a person who can be a potential threat then young girls and boys should be able to report it. Mm. And that mechanism we as a nation are lacking. Mm. That is why when uh, uh, one big brand, uh, I don't know if I can take names, True Caller held a program in mm. Hyderabad. So that is when I requested them, please have a mechanism where, you know, if somebody is bullying somebody, the big five companies like Google, YouTube, mm. WhatsApp, all of these people should Facebook, uh, all Instagram, the yes. all the platforms. They should have a mechanism where I can immediately say, this person is harassing me. Hmm. So at least at their algorithm level, they should block that person hmm. or, you know, not show that content to this particular person or something like that should happen. Hmm. And then at policy level, we should be able to make futuristic policies and policies and with AI coming in, 
you do not know how these machines are going to learn and if they learn from the negative stuff imagine the plight of the youngsters yeah so uh, the machines what they learn yesterday eu parliament had passed a law based on ethics and artificial intelligence and india should start thinking in those lines yeah we need to legislate on uh, ai we need to legislate on the cyber security issues we need to legislate more than anything give the kids a chance to you know complain at least hmm. just one simple button saying that this person is harassing me please stop this just a button hmm. just like a subscribe or whatever just a button i think yeah. we should do that we should and move especially with the area. elections uh, i uh, on the podcast we had the former election commissioner mr rawat who said that the biggest challenge for the next election is going to be social media because one fake news which is put yeah. out by the time the correction comes across through the platform or through the Uh, through the person who has tweeted or whatever a couple of hours could have gone by yeah. and that could impact on polling it could impact on the results it could yeah. impact and then you backpedal it will take too much time Very are you as a political party which is going into election in the next couple of weeks or um, in the next few months uh, are you fearful of that that uh, that these mechanisms are not yet been put into place yes ma'am that is a very impactful uh, platform actually and the lies that uh people spread on whatsapp uh, it could be anything starting from dumb religious uh, gyan where you know they hoax people into doing a lot of negative stuff to people advertising their own stuff mm. to you know inciting violence mm. we've seen many many such incidents happening mm. um we did stop uh, telangana in that sense technologically we evolved a little bit our more own savvy. police okay. works mm. more on you know content in whatsapp what goes so if a certain negative post circulates more than certain number of times the police immediately understands that something is happening so that the response is quicker quicker and they stop it mm. etc but that has to happen everywhere and it has sure. to be a national policy absolutely yes. well on that note <laughs> wishing you all the best thank you, for the state election as well as for 2024 thank you for having thank me you so podcast. much for being thank part you. of the podcast thank you. thank you thank you for watching or listening to this edition of ani podcast with smita prakash hope you enjoyed it as much as i did while speaking with k kavita do write in to us with your comments namaste jai hind click here to watch the previous episodes